Hi, I'm Michael from UEN. In this screencast, we're going to talk about what you can do to your Canvas course to make it more accessible for students who are accessing your course from the mobile apps. We'll talk about what the student app looks like for Canvas, as well as the Canvas teacher app and the Canvas parent app. We'll go over little tweaks you can make to pages, discussions, quizzes, everything you need to know to make sure your course is going to be fully accessible for students who are learning only on a mobile platform. Hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. This presentation, Mobilize Learning with the Canvas Student App, was originally done at the USIP conference in 2020. If you'd like to access all of the content from these slides, you can go to bit.ly slash UEN Mobile Canvas, and you'll find this slideshow available in Google Slides. During this presentation, we're going to hit on two very important ISTE standards for educator, the Designer 5C, which focuses on creating uh, using instructional design principles in innovative digital learning environments. And that's exactly what we're doing in Canvas. Um, we're trying to engage and support learning, and we're doing it specifically in a mobile platform and being mindful of what students are seeing on their portable devices. We're also going to look at Analyst 7A, which is to provide alternative ways for students to demonstrate competency and reflect on their learning using technology and using a mobile device in times of uh, online schooling is definitely an alternative way for students to do that. I want to point out that this slideshow does have some information that came from a slideshow done back in 2018 by Ryan Seilhammer and Kenneth Rogers um, at the InstructureCon event in Keystone, Colorado. And it also has some content that was shared with us by Leslie Stark in a slideshow she did back in 2019, talking about how the Canvas mobile app um, interfaces and what it looks like for students. So the first thing I want to point out is a little history lesson that Canvas had an app originally back in 2012. You can see here it had 24 reviews and only three stars. The problem with this app was it was designed for three different audiences. And so you had three different audiences disappointed in what the app had to offer. Three different roles using the app three different ways. You just had three different people being disappointed. So in 2016, a parent app was um, released, and then the following year, both the student and teacher app. And although they're not too entirely different, they do provide each user with what they want to see. It shows the teacher how they can manipulate um, information and maybe even do some grading. And for parents, it gives them communication with the teacher and it shows them how their student is doing. And then for students, it gives them an opportunity to consume data um, or information from the teacher's pages, but also turn in some assignments. And that's what we're going to focus on here. There was also an app that had a brief life called Polls that was a allowed teachers to ask questions in the classroom, and that's still available, but not really supported or used that much. So don't be confused if you see that in the App Store as well. So I want to point out also something about our students. We want to put our kids first and be mindful of how they are consuming content on screens. Um, we don't look at screen time the same way as we did a few years ago. Uh, we do know from information from the American Academy of Pediatrics that children that are 18 months or younger really shouldn't be on any screens at all. And hey, they can't really read, so they're probably not using Canvas. So don't worry about that. 18 months, to two years, again, we don't need to worry so much. But this is where we should be limiting screen time and avoiding solo use. When children are looking at screens, they should be doing it um, you know, together as a family or maybe communicating with friends and family by FaceTime, things like that. Once we get into two to five years, we want to keep the screen time down to about an hour a day. And then once they get six or older, we want to start placing consistent limits and not letting screen time affect things like sleep and exercises and other behaviors. So the reason I point this out is that we don't want to be giving students even more work to do on screens than they already are, but maybe replacing some of the other activities that they're doing. And we don't want to put things on Canvas that would put a student in a situation where they're staying up late at night, um, they're using a screen which is going to affect their sleep. Uh, we just want to be mindful about that and maybe talk to parents and students about knowing when to unplug. So now that we've covered that, let's dive into what the student app can do um, in Canvas and what students can do in the app. And it comes down to you, the teacher. How you set up your courses will determine whether or not students can be productive online in the mobile app. Sammy is a junior, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And she came over to babysit our kiddo 
Um, and I said, do you want us to turn on the Apple TV? And you said, no, I've got plenty of homework. And she pulled out her phone because you use Canvas on your phone. Yes, I do. How do you do that? So I have the Canvas app and it's really nice because I'm able, it's just like the website. I can go in and look at my quizzes, look at all my assignments, go and see what my teacher wants us to do for that day. I have a physics teacher who loves giving us Canvas homework and she just has what we did that day in class and all of our notes and all of our like homework. So if I get confused on something, I can go back and look at what I did. So do you put more of your homework on paper or on Canvas? It depends on the class. I have several teachers who solely use Canvas. I have to take pictures of my assignments and send them in via Canvas. And then I have other classes where we just use Canvas for quizzes and tests. And when you're like at home doing schoolwork and you have a choice of a computer or your phone, which one do you prefer? I like the computer because it's a bigger screen and I can see my scores more on the computer than I can uh, on my phone. But when I'm out and about, I'd way rather use my phone. Okay. One last question. Yes. Do you think that your teachers are building things on Canvas for you to use on your phone or to use on a computer? I think it's a bit of both. Yeah. I know for sure my teachers give us super long quizzes that are a lot easier to do on the computer, but they also send us a lot of links that take us to flash cards that are way easier to use on the phone than on the computer. Cool. Well, keep up yes. good work. Now, Sammy is just one student, but there's actually 107,646 students like her in our 17 higher ed institutions who are accessing their content via the Canvas app. If we look at the LEAs in Utah, the ones that are using Canvas, 72,279 students have accessed the Canvas app. That's a lot. Uh, and I don't think that many teachers are thinking about that when they're putting content on Canvas. So that's what we're going to cover now. How do students log into the Canvas mobile app? Without any direct instruction, this is what these almost 200,000 students are doing. They're going into either the App Store on their Apple device, iPad or iPhone, or even an iPod Touch, or they're going to the Canvas student app in their Google Play Store, and they're downloading it right to their device. Now, the first time you open it, it asks you to click Find My School, and when you do that, it will allow you to type in your school's name. I started typing in Utah Education and immediately got the news, Northeastern Utah Education Services um, instance and Utah Education Network. So I tapped on UEN since that's where I'm teaching from and it prompted me to put in my username and password and everybody can look here and see my password is dot 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 dot. There, secrets out. Then you click on login and you're good to go. Once you log in, you'll see your Canvas dashboard with your courses on the left. And un unlike on a computer where you see the main or universal menu on the left, the universal menu here is at the bottom. So you can look down there and see dashboard, calendar, to do, notifications, and even inbox. So Leslie Stark pointed out some things I want to cover real quick before we dive in to the specifics, some mobile do's and don'ts, short quizzes if you're going to be accessing them by the Canvas app. You don't want to have really long quizzes, and I have another tip for that as well with showing one question at a time. You can also set up discussions for students to participate in them, and they can read short content. You can have communication between teacher, student, and parent, and you can even do field work assignments with media recorder and uploading images. Some things you don't want to do along with those long quizzes are any cloud assignments because it forces the student to jump back and forth between multiple apps. You also don't want them reading really long content or like writing papers or taking major tests. That's just not uh, conducive to the tiny keyboard or the small screen. So we're going to go over a few examples of some courses in Canvas. We're going to look at the good, the bad, and the ugly and how they would look in the Canvas student app. First, here's the good. In UEN's courses, we put these nice tabs down here at the middle section of our page that allow the user to jump between course overview, instructor, and course credit. On the other hand, that's bad when we look at it on the iPad uh, because it removes those tabs and puts in three links and forces a whole lot of scrolling. It's even worse, the ugly, on a smartphone because now we have to scroll through page after page after page and it's really easy to get lost and confused. So what we should do instead is have multiple pages. So if you see here in this one module, we've put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like eight different pages. It makes it easier for the student to go through and read a consumptive, you know, uh, little piece. 
kind of like chunking, like we did teaching reading to early readers. So we chunk it into little pages that can be read and then move along. So when you're adding these pages, it's also a good idea, not just for the mobile app, but for the student's interface on the computer to add them to the student to do. You'll see this little checkbox down here at the bottom of the page. Check that. And then as kids read through each little piece or page, they can check it off just like they would an assignment or an activity in a module. So there it is again the bottom of the page construction area where it says options, click the add to student to do. So I want to point out that uh, if you're looking at this and it's already summer of 2020, you can jump into this mobile friendly MOOC we're designing. The digital photography in the classroom course was set up and I found that most of the participants were using their iPhones, iPads, and Droid phones, and Google Pixels to take the class with their as their camera. And I thought, well, why not have them take the whole class on that device, not just the camera, but uh, the phone. So you'll, you'll see this course available now, the mobile friendly MOOC for digital photography in the classroom. Um, not only do you use the Canvas student app, but you'll also learn how to upload photos, do discussions, uh, Adobe Spark app is featured. Google Photos and Apple Photos are also covered in this course. So you can do everything right on the device. So the second one uh, I want to point out is how to create a mobile friendly home page. And the one piece of advice I have here is to not use too many pictures and to keep everything above the fold. In the old days, in the 1920s you know, or 30s, you'd see a newspaper and the important information was above the fold. So in Canvas, make sure everything is up above that line before you get to the next button when you put your pages into modules and then it'll be easier for people to move through. With your home page, just one simple picture and a good place to start. When in doubt, sometimes people will use the modules page um, as their home page. And if you do that, use text headers. So when you put in like a whole bunch of links, like you see in this course over on the left, online resources, that's actually a text header. So I just went into the module and I clicked add, chose text header, and then put the title in of what this text header would be called. Now on to step number three, we're gonna talk about creating a mobile friendly assignment. Um, text entry and file uploads and photos work best. To do this, when you create a submission type, when you're editing your assignment, Go ahead and click on text entry or file uploads and then this is what it will look like um, to make a mobile friendly discussion step number four you want to make sure you keep the directions short and simple on just one page encouraging videos and images is, an, is a good idea and then also use your own video for directions it's really important for parents at home when they see their child learning on a mobile device when they also hear your voice, the teacher, and see your face, that adds a lot of credibility to the content and it lets the parents and the students all know that you care. Um, so here's some tips on that with the video discussion. Um, when you give explicit instructions on how students can upload their video, then you make sure that they are capable of doing it. Here on this screen, you'll see that I gave the instructions to introduce yourself using the record video button if they're on a computer. And then in the next paragraph, point out that if they're on a mobile device, use the attachment button. And in the video, they need to tell you their name, why they signed up for your course, one thing they hope to learn, and an interesting fact. So on this slide, you'll see um, over on the iPhone how the student actually goes in and does the assignment. So once they get in there, they're going to scroll down and they say, oh, well, I'm using a mobile device. So I'll click um, over to my camera and turn it to video and then do a video of themselves completing the assignment. So here's me. I click record and you can see the timer at the top and I start recording my video. I'll fast forward through that to the end. And then this is how the student would turn it in. They toggle back to the Canvas app, click the reply button, and there's that paper clip up there at the top. Click it and it says there are no attachments. So they just go to um, their library and you have to give it permission. Then they go to the recent video that they just made, choose that, it compresses the video and we'll then submit it into Canvas. So let your students know it takes just a minute or two. Um, there, mine's done. It shows the video as a movie attachment. If you wanna put in a message, you can, or you just click done. 
and then it will tell the student that they have turned in their video discussion. There it is, and they're all good to go. So now let's go take a look at what that's gonna look like for the teacher. Um, the teacher's view will be that they'll see a little file um, down there in the discussion post. This one is image 0555.mov. And when they click on it, they can open it and then watch the student's video. For tip number five, I wanna talk a little bit about quizzes. Um, if you make your quizzes really long, then you'll end up with uh, a lot of questions that the students have to scroll through and it's easy for them to get lost. So one thing I would recommend is don't make all of the questions appear at the same time. Instead, when you create a quiz um, in the details section, look down towards the bottom of the window and there's a little check mark that you can click that says show one question at a time. There it is. When you do that, then it's easy for the student to look at the quiz and just look at one question and then move through like they would be scrolling through pages or something like that. And it's all on one screen. And speaking of one screen, I should point out that the new quizzes, the um, classic quizzes was what you saw before, but now the new quizzes that has hotspots and categorization and things like that does work on the phone. So on the phone image here, you see there is a map of the United States and the students would have to actually draw or click on Utah and then click submit. That is an example of a hotspot. Works in the mobile app. Tip number six, I wanna talk about communicating with announcements. You may be aware that when you're building a Canvas course, you can go into the options of your course and say, I'd like to show my announcements on the homepage. And this is really nice on the computer because they do appear at the top of the homepage. Here's an example. I've sent out parking directions, a welcome to the course, and a link to the agenda. So all three of those appear at the top of the Canvas course on the computer interface. This is in a Chrome browser. Unfortunately, this does not happen when you do it on an iPad or iPhone or Droid phone. So the students are not going to see announcements appear like they would normally on the course. Therefore, I'd recommend that when you set up your course navigation, put announcements at the top. That way, it's easy on the home page of the course for students to see announcements there, then click on it, and then be able to read through each announcement. So what I like about this course, for example, is that if students are on campus at the University of Utah trying to figure out parking, well, if they have their phone and the Canvas app, they can go and read the directions right from the Canvas course. So they truly are learning mobily as they try to figure out how to park and fill out the, uh, the kiosk information. So I've got a couple miscellaneous tips to go through here at the end. Um, linking versus embedding, clarifying when to work, and making the best use of the technology. I'm going to dive deeper into each one of these items. When it comes to linking and embedding, I highly recommend that you do both. Um, you'll find that in some cases, like in this Google slideshow, in this digital photography class, embedding it works just great. Um, but if you do need to embed something that may not function well, put a link to it as well. Padlet is a good example of that. Although it can be embedded and functions really nicely in the computer interface, on a mobile app it might be kind of hard and wonky to move around. So at the top of this page you'll notice I put a link to it as well. To open this Padlet in its own window, click here. So that way I'm being redundant and I'm allowing students to access it both easily on their computer and on their mobile device. Another example is when you put a link into a module. Here I have three icebreakers that rock, and then the URL. Notice I click to the load in a new tab button. So what that happens if you look in the second window is you see three icebreakers that rock in the little chain that indicates it as a link. So the student clicks on it and it opens up that entire blog in its own window. This makes it more user friendly on the mobile device for sure, and it doesn't make it any worse on the computer. Clarifying when to work is something you'll want to put into your directions. In this example, I have students doing an activity in the Google Suite for Education and they're collaborating. They're going to be opening up not only Canvas, but also Google Drive and YouTube. They're going to be working in Sheets and Slides and a lot of different places. This would be really cumbersome on the phone because they'd be jumping between different apps and probably lose where they were, and lose where they were working and lose their focus. So what I did was put a specific instruction. Since this assignment will require you to open multiple browser tabs and work in several different tools, you should use a computer instead of a mobile device. So there's nothing wrong with telling students when they should be on a computer. 
And lastly, I want to talk about making the best use of the technology. In the past, we used to watch shows like The Jetsons, and we would see people talking on video chats, and we thought that would be amazing. And now that we live in that time, people are reluctant to use it. So don't be afraid to use the photo apps and the camera that is on these devices. Math teachers often ask me, how do I use Canvas for math when I have my students doing work on paper? Well, just because they're doing work on paper doesn't mean you have to be married to the actual physical paper. You don't want to carry around pages that students have to then wait a day to get back from you with scores on it. So have the students take a picture of their work and turn it in on Canvas. Then you never have to worry about a student saying, oh, I turned that into you. You must have lost it. So here's how it's done. That camera app is going to look like this little icon with the blue camera, the plus in the camera, um, when the students get into an activity. So here on the phone, you'll see the student goes in and finds an assignment called Upload a Photo. How unique, right? They click the Submit Assignment button down there in blue and it asks them to choose a file. Well, instead of choosing a file, they click that Camera Plus button, line up their homework, snap a picture of it, say Use Photo, there's the JPEG, and submit it. It's that easy. If once it's submitted, it says successfully submitted, and then they have the resubmit button down there in blue. So let's take a look at what it appears for the teacher. And the teacher goes into SpeedGrader, and they see the work right there. Notice they still have all the tools at the top for annotating, highlighting, writing in text, everything that you would normally do on a piece of paper, you can do to the picture here in SpeedGrader, give it a score, and then put in a comment. Michael, you are a genius. Thank you, Michael. I'm so impressed with your work. And that way the student gets their feedback before they even turn the paper into you. And if you're wondering what it looks like in the teacher app, check this out. When you're grading on an iPad or your phone, you can then look at the same speed grader interface with a little extra tool. There's a slider on there that allows you to slide the score over to whatever points you submitted. And again, you can still add annotations with text. Um, you can write or highlight. So it's actually easier to grade, in this case, using the speed grader interface from the teacher Canvas app than it is on a computer. So these are the big five that teachers can do in their app. Number one, communicate with students. That can be through the Canvas inbox or feedback on the SpeedGrader um, interface. You can make announcements. You can adjust assignments and due dates. And I can speak from experience here. One time I forgot to open a module and set the due dates. Uh, Saturday morning, a, t a student who was an educator reached out to me and I made the adjustments from the Canvas app on my phone on a chairlift. So you really are mobile. You can provide student feedback and you can also moderate discussions. I wouldn't encourage you to build Canvas content on the teacher app. That's not what it's designed for, but it is definitely a good tool for you to be grading work and collaborating and communicating. Another um, reason I want to suggest video is for any foreign languages. Um, American Sign Language, for example, is a perfect subject to teach where students can record themselves signing and turn in their assignments that way. If you do any other foreign languages or any other spoken activities um, like speeches and things like that, it provides students with an opportunity to show their fluency by recording themselves and their voices. So let's ask that question that I posed at the beginning of this presentation. What can the students do in the Canvas mobile app? And I said that it's up to you. And this is what it comes down to. Um, if you build the course so it is mobile friendly, your students will be able to go in and access their course dashboard. They'll be able to plan with the Canvas calendar and look at all of their due dates. They can check their to-do list in there. They can read content from Canvas pages that you put out there for them. Remember to make it short content, always above the fold. They can watch videos, participate in discussions, review their assignments, complete simple assignments. Nothing too complex with multiple tools, but they can do simple assignments and photo uploads. They can take quizzes, both in classic and in new, and they can monitor their progress and their grades. Now let's talk a little bit about the parent app. I haven't shown you too much on this, but it's pretty simple and it's definitely a good thing to share with your learning community. Parents can go in and do a lot of the same things their students can. They can review their student progress and grades. They only see their students work. They can review course content and material that you post. So they can talk to their students, not just about the quiz score they got, but the actual questions on the quiz. They can read and watch teacher feedback from you, which is gold. Make sure you do that as much as possible. Access due dates and events 
and they can contact the teacher with the inbox if they need to communicate with you directly. So I'm talking to Kat, and Kat, you have a middle schooler at Butler Middle? I'm a sixth grader, yeah. Sixth grader, mm -hmm. okay. And how do you use Canvas? It really came in handy. We actually did a week-long vacation. I had to take my, I took my son out of school. Mm -hmm. So to find all those assignments that he'd missed while you were gone, we were able to go on each class and look up the module, get the assignment, get the notes, get anything he'd missed, and then he was able to make up all his work. And you mentioned something about rubrics. You go yes. in and look at the rubrics on the assignments? You can. You can look up and go, oh wait, let's make sure we've hit all the points on the rubrics to make sure your essay is as complete as can be. Cool. And it's on there. Now that you heard from a parent, I want to let you know that the Canvas Parent 3.1 beta is now available. Um, if you go to the Canvas comments, you can look this up and see some of the new things that they're adding, like uh, messaging between parents and students, um, figured out how to incorporate messaging in a way that both benefits everybody and in students as well. Um, some new features are available there. But what I want to leave you with that's most important is this checklist that um, Instructor has put out. You can get to it by going to bit.ly slash canvas dash mobile check. Or if you Google it, you'll probably find it. I'll give you a little preview of it. What it does um, is allows you to not only look at how your course is designed and check off the places where you've done things, like I mentioned text headers and modules and things like that, but in the third column it says example and you can click on a link right to see an example of what that should look like when you put the text headers in. So everything that I talked about in this um, presentation is included and maybe a couple other little nuggets, but what's best is that it has this nice checklist feature for you to share with your teachers to make sure they're doing things correctly. And then there are some uh, presentations you can link to down here like Ryan's that I talked about earlier and some new ones as well. Um, and it also refers to the Universal Design for Learning, which is a good way to make sure that your courses are accommodating all learners. So be sure to check that out. So with that checklist and with the screencast you just saw on the tips and the interviews, I hope that you got some ideas on how to make your Canvas course more mobile friendly for your students who are using the mobile apps. And if you want this slideshow in Google Slides format, you can go to bit.ly slash UEN mobile canvas and Take this slideshow, adjust it how it works best for you, share it with your teachers, and use it and go forth and make Canvas learning fun for everybody in a mobile environment. Thanks a lot for watching. <music>